Welcome back, everybody. We are still discussing templates using Photoshop CC. Uh, in the previous video, we discussed how to use existing templates to save you uh, time in order to create all sorts of things in Photoshop. But today we're going to be talking about how to create your own templates in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a um, a invitation template, more specifically a graduation invitation. So I hit the create new button after opening up Photoshop. We're just going to make our own little uh, preset um, over here. So I can, we'll just call this grad announcement. We're creating a file. Because it's print, we're going to switch from pixels to inches. Uh, and we're going to make the width 7 and the height 5 to perfectly fit a 5 by 7 size card. And the resolution for print is always going to be 300. I'm going to change the contents of my background to black and then hit create. That will give me a perfectly black um, little background here. I'm going to adjust a couple things to my Photoshop workspace. Here we go. Um, all right, so in the previous video, we talked a little bit about rulers. We talked about guidelines. You can see that I've got my rulers already displayed here. I can uh, make them show up with Command or Control R, or I could go to the View menu and check Rulers. Um, I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to drag out a ruler that's about a quarter of an inch from all sides. Not a ruler. I'm going to drag out a guideline just so I can kind of see what I'm working with here. And we have one right there. And then I'm also going to go to View, New Guide, and I'm just going to make a vertical guideline at 50%. Um, that way I kind of, I know how much of the space that I'm actually taking up. All right, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I know what I'm working with. And if any time, if I don't want to see my guidelines, I can go to View, um, and then I can go to Show, and I can uncheck, let's see, uncheck Guides, and they'll all go away. But View, Show, and we're going to let our guides show up. There we go. Um, okay, so I would say before doing anything like this, it's always a good idea uh, to find inspiration. Look at what these things look like. So I'm making grad announcements, so I'm just going to search graduation invitations or announcements. Let's see. So you can just kind of, we're not <clears throat> looking to steal from any of these. We're just trying to see what they look like and to get an idea, see what you like from the way that these things look. You know, there's ones like that. Here we have these. Looks like ours is probably going to use photographs. We can change this from invitations to announcements. This will help you know what type of verbiage is going to dis be displayed on these. Make sure you don't click the top row that those are actually ads. We're just going to do a one single page one. But now we, we, we have a better idea of what they're going to look like. Okay, now this whole time we are designing with this in mind, knowing that this is going to be a template. So we need to design our document in such a way that uh, other people would be able to easily use it. I'm going to pull my layers panel right up here. I'm actually, well, actually let's, let's move it down here and move adjustments over here. I'm docking my panels now to make them easier to see. Okay, uh, I'm going to unlock the background layer. We're going to call this background. We're also going to put that layer in a folder, and I actually think I have this adjusted, so you can't really see that. Let's change that. There we go. Now we can see my Photoshop icons down here at the bottom. Um, okay, so we're calling this background. Our background layer is in our group that is also called background. Let's give it a color. So I'll right click it and we'll just set it to blue. Okay, so uh, this is just gonna be easier to manage. I'm gonna make a, go to my shape layer here. We're going to make a, I guess white. We can change it later. Square, it's gonna take up the majority of this. Okay, that's our rectangle. Um, we'll call that white. And we'll actually just put that in our background layer too. So we've got multiple layers in here. And it automatically adjusted the color of that to blue because that folder or that group is entirely blue. Um, all right, now let's think. Let's, I am going to make a selection on a blank layer. This is going to be our placeholder for our image. We're just going to put it right there. And I'm going, whoops, I'm going to fill that space 
edit fill um, with any color. I'm just going to do gray for now. The resulting color doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is kind of going back to when we talked about smart objects, I'm going to make this layer a smart object. And this is going to be where you uh, insert your picture. So we'll just say double click and we'll make a little arrow here. You could even call it double click for photo or let's see. Whoops, and I spelled photo wrong. There we go. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to double click the thumbnail. That will pull this up and let's place, we'll say file place embedded. So it's contained within here. Um, I have this. We'll place one of these pictures. I'm going to place this one. But because of the fact that it's a smart object and we're going to save this as a PSD file, uh, anybody else that's ever using this can, can modify this uh, without any issue. So here we go. Uh, it wasn't taking up the entirety <clears throat> of the space that we needed it to, so I've adjusted the size. And then if you remember when we talked about smart objects, if I say file save and then file close, this will update what we had earlier. All right, and if I wanted to adjust it even more, I could come back here, resize it even more. It wasn't perfectly centered. I'm not sure I need it centered, but we'll say file save, file close. There we go. Um, okay, so next up we need some type. So I'm going to pull up my type tool and I'm going to just type, uh, let's see, we're going to first type over our subject. What did some of these say? Graduation, graduate, graduation celebration, class of 2019. Let's just type the word graduate down here. Okay. We'll adjust the size. 72 might be a little big. Let's try 60. And obviously this font is not working out perfectly for us. Uh, also the color is really not working out. Um, so what I'm going to do is first just change the color to, um, let's change it to white. We'll probably end up changing it to something different here in a little bit. Um, and then let's, we could cycle through my fonts. It's hard to kind of see it because it's on top of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on the Typekit button and we're going to add a font from Typekit. So this will pull Typekit up, should already have you logged in, and uh, we're going to click on script so we can see some script fonts, and then you can see over here maybe if we want a, a weightier, fatter script font, you can click on that, you can change it to C. Script fonts read for kind of like a, a fancier event, which is why we're looking for one of those. Normally, a uh, general rule of thumb is to keep your any design that you're making uh, three different fonts or less, and even three might be pushing it. I kind of like this one, Tangerine. So I'm going to click on Activate Fonts. And now if I go back to Photoshop, I should be able to highlight my text here. Photoshop's being slow, but that's okay. Remember, several different ways you can highlight your text. I actually made more layers. Let's select our layers, put them in the trash. Select trash. There we go. Okay, and now I should have a new font over here called Tangerine. And there it is. And it says graduate. And I actually feel like it looks pretty nice. I'm going to select just the G. and We're going to make the G quite a bit bigger. Even bigger than that. There we go. And we can select everything else. Um, because I feel like the G is so big that everything else needs to be moved up. So we're going to adjust the baseline shift, um, which is kind of like the bottom line. If you remember when you learned to write cursive, um, the baseline shift is the bottom. The way that I did that was I highlighted the text I wanted to adjust, and I held uh, either Alt or Option, depending on if you're Windows or Mac, uh, and Shift, and I used the arrow keys. You can also do the same thing under the uh, character panel. And if you're not sure which one does what, you can just hover over these, and you can see... Uh, that this one right here does the baseline shift, and I've got mine set to 13. And we'll say OK. Um, OK, so in order to make that look maybe a little bit better, we can also add a layer style. So let's go to Layer, Layer Style, pull those up. Or we can just even first check our styles. Styles are ways you can uh, adjust text. These are all pretty awful, but they might be a certain starting point for things. 
I don't like any of them. Uh, so let's go to our history and we'll just go right back to when that was normal. Um, all right, so we're going to try creating our own layer style here. I'm going to just go to stroke and we're going to paint a black outline around the edges. Already set to the outside. And that to me is way easier to read already. Um, let's see if there's let's see, gold layer style for Photoshop. Now the tough part, and I could easily watch one of these YouTube videos and and pull up how to to do that, but I'm not going to force you guys to watch me <laughs> watching a YouTube video. Um, and you could download one, and it would show you how to use it. But I think for the sake of time, we're just going to stick with what we've got right here and keep it pretty simple. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to adjust the kerning of some of these letters. Kerning is just um, how things look when they're touching. Because this is a script font, these letters are supposed to flow, I guess except for the R. I have a little bit of an issue with the A and the T there. We'll see right there, but I think we just might have to live with that issue. There we go. Let's make, can we make that even a little bit larger? Okay, so let's see. Let's we, we want to keep this pretty um, simple and easy for somebody to using the temp that's using the temple to manage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the photo. I'm going to put it in a group. We're going to call this group photo, or maybe photos because we'll add another one later. Okay, um, and then we'll make another. Or let's let's add some more text first. Let's add, I'm going to duplicate that layer, put it up at the top, and we'll put this, maybe we'll make this say class of 2019. I'm trying to think of where I want that to go. Maybe right there in the center above her head. Can maybe make it a little bit smaller. What size is that? Let's make it 60. We've got it right there in the center. Because it has that stroke, it's actually easy to read on both sides here. Um, and we're going to adjust the kerning again. I'm just going to highlight or just go in between where it's a little bit messed up. And I'm holding Alt or Option. And I'm using the arrow keys to adjust this. And that spacing is, there's really no perfect amount, um, but I like that better. Okay. Let's see, we're going to use our smart guides to make sure that that's centered exactly where we want it to be. I might move it up a little bit so it goes a little bit into our margin. There we go. Um, and now we're just going to, let's, let's, look at, let's go back to looking at those other examples that we saw. And you can also search like what font goes well with and then the name of your font. The font we're using is Tangerine. Okay, and here we can see Popular pairings, the open sands. Let's see, do we have that? Let's go back over here. Um, we'll make some text and we'll just put this person's name. We're going to make up a name for this girl. Um, her new name is going to be Kelly. Can't see it because it's white. Um, let's see, Kelly Smith. Let's make that text black and let's also make that text much smaller if we could put their middle name uh let's see that seems like a a name a real name and we can center this right there Um, there we go. So we're going to change that font to Open Sans because Google tells us that it pairs well with the other font we're already using. So I'm going to see if I have that font, which I don't. We'll see if it's in Typekit. And it is. So we will find that font. Kind of boring, but okay. And we will install that font. Now if we go back to here, we should be able to highlight this and change it to the font that we just installed. Oh, 
And anytime you see a font with a little carrot beside it here, that means there's other versions, other variations of it within there. Let's see. I might keep this, the, uh, the fancy text. Maybe we'll copy that layer style too. Maybe we'll make all the other aspects of this to have uh, open sans. Oh no, what have we done? I think the stroke might be a little bit too big. Let's see. Making it okay, that's better. And let's just very quickly adjust the tracking of some of this. Let's spread it out. Maybe that was a bit too much. Here we go. Now we can zoom in. And adjust the kerning where it is needed. go. This font doesn't really work very well with our uh, with the stroke that we've got, but that's okay. Um, and it's no longer centered. There we go. Okay. Release Smith. Something about that that feels off to me. Um, let's go back down into our background layer. I'm going to make another shape. So here, this time we're going to make this shape black. Whoops, and it actually already changed the shape that I had that was existing. Let's see. There we have that. We're going to modify this to be black. And we can adjust that too. Okay, liking this a little bit better now. So now we can turn the background off. We're starting to get a lot of text layers here. I'm gonna select the uh, layer with our photos in it and we're gonna just make that one red. And I'm gonna select next all of the text layers, holding shift or control, clicking on all of them, continuing to hold shift, clicking on the group icon, and we're gonna call this text. And let's actually add a color to that as well. So we're gonna make this one green. So it's just easy to read. Now you can look how my uh, layers are much more organized than they were earlier, so I can very quickly uh, navigate through this Photoshop document. All right, so we've got our text here. Um, let's see, we did say we were gonna add other pictures, but I'm not really sure we're gonna have too much space to do that. Um, all right, we're gonna open back up the text. We're going to select a new font. We're gonna go back to Open Sans. We don't want to change the font that we've got. So we'll just click down here. We've got our lorem ipsum, which is always placeholder text. Okay, we'll just stick with Open Sans Light. We'll make this size 12. And then we'll just make up a spot. Uh, let's see. We'll call it Armadillo Ranch. And we can put up these RSVP. And we'll just make up an email. I'll put my school email.
the space there is bothering me a little bit, but we could probably adjust that. We can move everything around however we would like. I feel like that's kind of losing the part of there that makes sense. And there we go. Um, so now the final thing I'm going to do, oh, we've actually got everything perfectly aligned there. We could even go into the background and put maybe another shape here. Let's see. Let's put a shape just around this. That's just like, maybe we'll put a white stroke. So we'll put nothing in the fill. The stroke will be white. And we'll change the size to... So I, that took me a minute to figure it out. Um, we can't see that because it's below the picture. So if we really wanted to be able to see that, we would have to take that rectangle, what a rookie mistake, uh, and drag it to the top. Now you can see it's a little bit big. Um, let's just go back and change the pixels here. We had it at four. And we just wanted that little white box around it. Um, and we could actually center that with the photo. We just have to select both of them, go to our move tool, and then they're centered together. Uh, yeah, that looks awful. And it just messes up our organization. So I'm going to select that, throw it in the trash can, and then it is gone. Um, okay, so we've got our little graduation uh, celebration here. Um, and if I wanted to, so it's everything's organized. We've got everything in folders. We have all of those folders color coded. Uh, so we've got our text is green, our photos are red, and our background or design is blue. Uh, if I were done with this and somebody else wanted to use it, they could save it as a JPEG and then print it. Uh, if I want other people to be able to use this document, though, I would have to save this as a Photoshop file. So we're going to call this uh, grad announcement template. Whoops, can't type. There we go. And we're going to save it as a PSD file. Uh, now, your template that you make does not have to be um, for a graduation. It could be for a birthday party. It could be for any number of things. But just please try to make sure that your layers are organized, uh, color-coded, that, that you use groups in order to help organize them, um, that you save it as a PSD file so that other people can also use it.